Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Victor. I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch on a couple topics that my uh, partner I actually covered, and then uh, also throw in a couple disclaimers on uh, a couple of their issues that they're uh, actually trying to come up with. Um, so one of the issues that uh, one of my uh, my colleagues actually reported on was the black market. Um, those of you guys not aware of the black market, the black market is illegal completely. Um, people are doing stuff illegally in the form of selling marijuana, growing marijuana, and actually distributing it. But one thing that there's also that nobody's actually aware of, there's actually a gray market. Those of you guys that are not aware of a gray market, a gray market is pretty much a form of type of people working legitly under a legal name or actually getting a license through the whole taxation of the whole Prop 64 in Colorado like they have. Um, but what ends up happening is they end up selling it illegally to people that are nowhere to do with any type of either medical reasons or anybody that's recreational. They're just selling it off to the side so they could pocket their own money, uh, which leads to a decrease in the revenue that's actually getting occurred into the total revenue of the states. Um, but another topic on that aspect, um, the whole regulation of uh, what my opponents that were actually stating upon, um, on 10 reasons uh, why marijuana should not be legalized by, uh, Rochelle, by Rochelle Focus, on August 8, 2014, number one. She states that marijuana legalization will usher America's new version of a big tobacco. Okay. Those of you guys that know about that, when tobacco boomed, they pretty much boomed. Everybody got screwed on the whole taxation, the excess tax that everybody had. Um, every state went national, nationwide, where everybody was taxed on a certain tobacco or tobacco products. So the increase actually did increase revenue, but actually did at the same time drop the consumption of tobacco cigarettes. But in that same article, there is actually the former head of strategy for Microsoft. He states that he would like to mint more millionaires than Microsoft with marijuana, and that he would like to create Starbucks as a marijuana. So in a form, what he's trying to do is monopolize in a form of bringing in big companies and formatting a market that they're gonna overcome the less, or you could say the people that are actually just trying to make ends meet, they're the big company that's actually gonna blow them under the water and pretty much take them all out. Um, another thing that they actually t talked about was this, the disparity of the whole decriminalization. Uh, the, top, the topic on decriminalization, on the same, the same topic that, uh, the same uh, article that I was reading, um, there's another one that says, uh, the, Bureau of Just, the Bureau of Justice Statistics in 2004 data collected survey of inmates in state correctional facilities. Um, statistics of state level prisoners reveal that 0.3% of all state inmates were behind bars of marijuana possession only. That is real small. Those of you guys that have been talking about the whole felonies and how many people are incarcerated, you're talking about 0.03% of people that are actually in prison for marijuana possession. That's ridiculous. Nobody is actually in there for marijuana. Now, in that same, the same article, in the same statistics, it also states that 99.8% of federal prisoners sentenced in drug offenses were incarcerated due to drug trafficking. What does that take? Goes back into the black market that I was just talking about recent or previously. In the gray market, what they're doing, selling illegally, same thing in the gray market, they're selling on the side, eventually they get caught. Where they end up? Fred, uh, federal prison with the other 99% of the people that are actually incarcerated for drug, drug trafficking. Another big thing that I want to talk about is the gray market. Those of you guys that I just sat there and I spoke about. In an article of uh, Denver Post, 
April 14, 2016, Governor John Hickenlooper states, if we don't stamp out right now, it becomes accessible. And then all of a sudden people are going to start getting hurt, the Democrat said in an interview. If we let crime grow, it will breed on its opportunity. And it goes back into the gray market. So a little bit, the legal operation of part of the gray market is which marijuana is grown legally, but is sold illegally. In that same article, it has a the same thing. Burglary went up 8% due to the market of legalization in Colorado. So the whole industry of marijuana, the burglary has went up 8% due to the whole black market, gray market. Another big thing that I do want to talk about is that they said that it was not an addictive drug. Um, and that uh, people tend to not, um, they smoke weed one time and then they kind of just stop smoking weed. I, I don't get that. But on one of the facts that uh, it says on uh, Adapted from Caesars, the uh, form of National Center of Addiction and Substance Abuse of Columbia University, a national survey of American uh, attitudes of substance abuse uh, of teens in 2012. According to data from 2012 National Survey of American uh, Attitudes of Substance Abuse, alcohol and cigarettes were mostly accessible substance for kids that were from 12 to 17, with 50% and 44% of them reporting that they could obtain them within one day, respectively, youth were least likely to report that they could get marijuana within a day. 45% of them report that they would be unable to get marijuana in that same day. So you do the math, that's over 55% of kids that are from 12 to 17 that actually have their hands or within that same day they have access to getting marijuana. Me personally, I have kids. I do not want my kids to be nowhere around that form. When it reaches a certain age, I'm pretty sure that's why they set the, the regulations at 21. But we're talking about a black market and a gray market that's actually there for our kids. That's something that I wouldn't want none of your guys' kids or my kids or anybody else to get influenced with that. So the same thing I'll leave and I'll finish off with. It's not Woodstock. The weed's not Woodstock anymore, you guys. And those of you guys that are aware of the whole thing, that was like 1% of THC. We're looking at now with marijuana reaching 99.9% .9 of THC. That's a big difference, you guys. Thank you very much. Yes,